right, so today I'm going to share with you how to prepare a file for um, cutting using the pass-through process that I did in my garden gnome, my fall garden gnome project. So in that project, I already prepared the file for pass-through cutting. Um, but what if you want to use something that I haven't prepared for it, right? Like what if you have some other image or even some text that you want to create and you want to be able to use the pass-through function. So today I'm going to share with you how to do that. And in this case, I'm going to start by writing some text as if you wanted to make like a large text sign. And then we're going to cut that apart so that you could use the pass-through function and cut something that is much larger than 12 by 12. So to start out with that, we're going to click on the um, text icon over here, and I'm working in Inkscape, which is totally free, so I highly recommend it. Um, now let's just draw a shape that's roughly the shape we want to put text in, and I'm just going to write pass through. Now I'm going to change this font to some sort of script font that would be connected. So let's just find some sort of font and I'll go with this one right here. You can use any font really. I'm just trying to make sure that I select one that is um, going to work. And I'll just make this a little bigger so we can see it. So now we've got our pass through text and unfortunately text is not readable um, in an SVG or by like the Glow4j app. We're going to have to convert this to a pen. So let's start with that. We're gonna go to the cursor and then just select the text, go up to path and do object to path. And so now you have a individual path and let me show you what I mean by that. Let's go over here to objects and you can now see that there's a grouping. If you expand that grouping, you have a path here now for each individual letter. All right, now let me point this out first real quick. If you go up to view and display mode, I'm already functioning in the outline mode. That's not usually the default. So if you don't see something like this when you're working in it and your text looks um, filled in, then I highly recommend switching to the outline mode. So again, that's view, display mode, and then outline mode. And the reason I say that, let me zoom in, is you can see now each of these lines is exactly what your Glowforge would cut. So for example, when you see the part of the T that's actually cutting through the H, your Glowforge would actually cut this piece of the T out from the H. And that's not what you want. You want each of the letters to be connected. So let me zoom back out. And we're going to need to combine all these letters so that the Glowforge doesn't do all these extra cuts that we don't need that would separate them into not only individual letters, but also like have weird cutouts within our letters. So coming back here to the side again, I'm in the objects tab. And like I mentioned before, you have a grouping here and you have individual paths. For what we're going to need to do next, um, it can't, we can't select the grouping. So the options you have are to either come over here and select the individual paths, or you can ungroup it, which I find easier. And then It'll just select all the paths for you. And now we can move forward. So you wanna select your paths, which is essentially each individual letter, come up here to path, and then click on union. And now what it does is you can see all the letters are actually connected. That T we were talking about, you can see it, it still goes through the H, but it's not actually gonna cut it out of the H. So this is now what we want. All right, now we need to decide where we're actually gonna cut this. Um, I like to work with about 11.5 inches because that's going to um, estimate for me the size of the cutting bed. The cutting bed can do 12 inches, but I find 11.5 is a little safer to work with. So I'm just gonna create a square and then go back up to select and change the square to 11.5 inches wide. So coming up here, you can see we've got inches and width, I'm gonna change this to 11.5. So we've got that piece here. Now you wanna look, you wanna adjust this onto your font so that you have one side of the square on like one end of it and the other side 
cutting through somewhere in your text. But if you see where we would in theory cut through, it would have one, two, three, four, five, six points that we'd have to line up um, while doing the pass through. Whereas if we move it to somewhere around here, we would only have two points. So let me zoom in so you can see what I mean. Now we're only cutting between two points and that's a lot better. So let's go with that. Now I'm gonna create a second set, a second square and just line it right up. And now you just wanna check and make sure that that second square is at least big enough to cover the rest of the text. If not, you would do this process a second time to cut your text again. So we've got our two pieces here. Now we need to create our registration marks. So let's grab the square icon again. And along that cut line, you want to create two rectangles. So we've got one and two. These are our registration marks. And I actually want to duplicate these. We're gonna want, oh, actually, no, we don't need to duplicate them, sorry. So now we've got our two rectangles and our text. Now the next step is to actually combine the text with those rectangles. You want them to be one. So select your text, select your registration marks, come up here to path and do union. And now you can see our path and our registration marks are now one. Now we need to duplicate this text and the registration marks a second time. So with it selected, do control C and control V and then just line them up. And just to make sure they're in exactly the same space, I like to actually select both of them, go over here to the align tool and make sure they're truly centered. All right. So to summarize what we've got, we've got two instances of our text with the registration marks connected, and we've got two squares that represent your cutting space. Now we need to actually cut this apart. So let's come back to the objects tab, select one instance of your text and one instance of the big, big rectangle we did. Go to path and difference. And then we're gonna do the same thing again. Select the other version of the text and the other rectangle and do path and difference. And now you can see they are separated. But if we went forward and stopped here, let me zoom in so you can see, it would actually fully cut the piece. You see that line there? We don't want that because if we keep that, then it will actually make those two separate pieces and we won't be able to do one long cut. So we need to get rid of that line. And to do that, you're gonna select the node tool and select the line we wanna get rid of. So this line right here, select that. Now come up here and do delete. And that line is now gone. So if I click away, you can see it's now gone. So I'll do that again. Select the line we want to delete. Come up here and you want to use this one right here. Delete segment between two nodes. And now you can see that piece is gone. So if we, let me zoom out so you can see it. If we now combine our two pieces back together, you can see that it flows from one to the other, but you can separate them. Now, where I mentioned before, I think that the registration marks are really useful is that when you're trying to line these two up, the registration marks also help you in the design app to get them where they need to be. So we can select both and go back to this area over here. And we want to center along the horizontal axis just to make sure they're both lined up and you're done. So from this point, all you do is you save this as an SVG and then import into your Glowforge app and then follow the same exact process I showed during the fall gnome project. And your design is ready to cut using the pass-through. Hope this was really helpful. If you have any questions, just leave a comment.